Okay, the second newish objective is the basic structure. Okay, so we're gonna go over this real quick. Now for carbohydrates, there is this kind of signature one to two to one carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen ratio. So remember for carbohydrates, there are no other elements. You only have a carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and that's it. Okay, now I have this kind of, you know, seemingly complex um, figure, but it's pretty simple. Now for glucose, galactose, fructose, remember those are all monomers, right? They're all like uh, simple sugars, the individual sugar units. So you see they all have six carbons, okay? six carbons, six carbons. But right now there are this kind of linear straight chain, right? This linear structure. But if you put the two ends together, that will form these structures. So it's either this hexagon structure, whoops. So it's either the hexagon structure or the pentagon structure. Okay, once you put the two ends of that linear structure together. And again, there are just three elements, right? Hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. And you will see a lot of hydroxyl groups attached to the ring. And that's what makes sugar very water soluble because the hydroxyl group is very polar. It likes water. So all the sugar um, chemicals are very water soluble. Okay, so that's carbohydrate. Proteins, um, you need to know the building block for proteins. So once you know what each amino acid looks like, and just imagine you have a chain of amino acid, and that's basically what protein looks like. Um, we mentioned this a little bit in the genetics chapter too. Okay, so for proteins, very important, amino acids are the building blocks. Okay, now when you look at the structure of each individual amino acid, they have most of the structures identical. There is only one variable component. Now, all the amino acid has this center carbon. That's very important. That's why we call it alpha carbon. And everything else is around this alpha carbon. But there are a total of four components around this center carbon. The first component we're going to go from the simplest is just the hydrogen ion. And that's it. That's it. Just one atom. And then on the, on the left side of the hydrogen, you have this amino group. It's just NH2 amino group. And then on the other side, you have the carboxyl group. That's the COOH. Okay. And then the fourth component, that's the most important one because different amino acids have different R side chain. So this R side chain changes depending on which amino acid that you're talking about. But everything else is the same. The hydrogen atom, the amino group, and then the hydrox the carboxyl group, they are all the same. Okay, so that's protein. And again, when you put multiple amino acids together, that's a polypeptide chain, right? Sometimes it's a whole protein. Sometimes this polypeptide chain could be just a part of a, a protein. And I want to mention that for proteins, have you noticed that it has some um, elements that are not in glucose, right? So for instance, you have nitrogen. Nitrogen is never found in um, glucose or other carbohydrates. Okay, so that's something that kind of differs proteins and carbohydrates in terms of their structure and their composition. Okay, now lipids, uh, we're just gonna focus on the most common type of lipid, uh, which is fat triglyceride. I don't think teas will go that advanced and go into less common lipids. So we're gonna focus on triglycerides and then we're gonna mention uh, phospholipid real quick. So for triglycerides, tri means a three. Okay? And that's because you're gonna have this, you know, like a head structure with a three tails. So you have a glycerol, that's the head, and then you have a three fatty acid chains. And then you're gonna put them together. Now, remember when you put something together, that's dehydration synthesis, right? You have to take away a water molecule. And that's what exactly happens here for each of the fatty acid chain. So you remove these water 
So you remove these components as water molecules, and that connects the two components together, right? So again, you have a little almost like a head structure, and that that's followed by three tails, and that's the fatty acid tails. When you look at triglyceride, they also just have a three elements, right? Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But sometimes they do have um, additional elements, for example, phosphorus. And a good example of protein uh, of lipid that contains phosphorus is a phospholipid. So this is a, what the structure looks like um, in the cell membrane because phospholipid is the, the backbone of a cell membrane. It's very, very important. So there are two layers, right? That's why we call it phospholipid by layer. And then for each layer, you have this phosphate head that's polar, and that's the phosphate head. That's polar, but the majority of the phospholipid bilayer is this fatty acids, right? You see the, the two tails, two tails? That's fatty acids. So fatty acids are lipids, right? They're non-polar, they don't like water, non-polar. So this leads to that unique um, characteristic for cell membrane, right, in terms of what it allows to pass through and what it blocks. So that's why we say is the cell membrane controls what goes into the cell or what comes out of the cell. Okay, so that's lipid. And last one, nucleic acid. So we just recently went over the genetics section. So I think this should be very familiar and um, just kind of real quick, the building block for nucleic acid is nucleotide. This is the typical structure of one nucleotide. So remember, there are three components. Now, when you look at nucleic acid, they contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, but there are, there are two additional elements, right? Phosphorus and nitrogen. Okay. So the composition of nucleic acid is different than the composition for proteins or carbohydrates. All right, now let's move on to practice questions. Number one. Now this is about protein synthesis. So when we talk about synthesis, it's either dehydration synthesis or also known as, as condensation, so A and B. So this is really a question about uh, how things are synthesized or broken down. Now, what if I change the question to, um, what's the end product of protein digestion? What would be your answer? Yeah, that will be the building block, right? Which is um, amino, oops, amino acid. Okay, next question. Okay, so in this question, the student is digesting plant fibers. Now, what kind of uh, biomolecules make up plant fibers? It's carbohydrates, right? Um, when you digest carbohydrates, these molecules will be broken down to their monomers, right? So what's the monomer for carbohydrate? That would be glucose. Correct answer is B. Next question. Okay, I bet a lot of you have done this experiment in um, a biology lab. So you break down the tissues, cells, and um, your goal is to extract the DNA from strawberries. There is a term here. I don't know if you can guess what it is. So this is deoxyribonuclease. 
Well, um, I think my battery is completely dead for my pen. So I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna do this with my finger. Okay, so let's look at the first part, deoxyribonucleate. So this refers to deoxyribonucleic acid, which is a DNA. And then ASE, if you remember, ASE typically refers to some kind of enzyme. So with this combination, this particular enzyme can break down DNA. Okay, so now you know the function for this enzyme. And what would happen if you put this enzyme in a bunch of DNA extract? What would happen? The enzyme is going to break down the DNA, right, to its um, much smaller subunits, which would be the three components in each nucleotide, right? So each nucleotide has has a pentose sugar, right? Now for DNA, it's gonna be deoxyribose. Uh, also there's a nitrogenous base and there's also phosphate, right? So the correct answer is A, C, and D. Now, if you um, have a copy of this slide, you probably notice that over here, I have oxyribose to kind of remind you that for RNA, you do have that oxygen. Um, but typically, we just call it ribose. So, you know, I actually didn't need to do that actual work. So I just changed it to ribose, which is what we typically use. Okay, next question. The 20 amino acids that make up different proteins are different in the site chain, right? Which is also known as the R group structurally. So everything else is really the same, right? At the amino group, the carboxyl group, um, they're exactly identical between the 20 different amino acids. Now for amino acids, there's no pentose sugar, right? And there's no phosphate. Okay, so again, correct answer is the last one, side chain, our group. Okay, good job, guys. Um, if you learned something new, please be sure to subscribe, like the video, and share the video if you can. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.